Dave, stop being the other guy. You stop being the other guy. You're not even sure what that meant anyway. You are now the Wayward Vagabond. Retreat. Got him already. Wayward Vagabond, examine that rotten pumpkin. What pumpkin? Eh. Wayward Vagabond, check the little red bar. It appears to be a gauge for a large power cell, perhaps fueled by some type of nuclear reaction. If this is the case, it is running relatively low on fuel. But who knows how long it's been running here. You do not care about this sort of nonsense and you will disregard it at once. You are very hungry. Capture log that can of gravy. Capture log? You have no idea what that means. It is total nonsense and you do not know what to make of it. You will not give the foolish notion a second thought. Pick up the can of gravy. Just pick it up. You just pick it up. You are now holding the can of gravy. Use your sharp teeth to poke a hole in the lid of the can. Your teeth are useless for this task. They are blunt like that of livestock, presumably suitable for mashing up plant matter and not puncturing metal. Attempt to open the can with your weak pathetic digits. Your weak pathetic digits are not strong enough to penetrate the can. Your fingers are certainly pointy enough and your black carapace is suitably rigid. But you just don't have enough muscle for the task. It is suggested that you take the can labelled beans. Well, okay, you take that too. Now how about you examine that can of custard? The can clearly reads mustard, a fact of which you are perfectly well aware. It's sort of cumbersome holding all of these cans at once. You doubt you can hold many more than this. Maybe one or two. You'll need to find something to put stuff in if you want to carry a lot of things around. Now how about you examine the marking on your wrist? You drop all the cans at once and look at your wrist. It is a sort of specialized barcode pattern. This brings back unpleasant memories and you'll prefer not to dwell on it. Now examine the small potted plant. What plant? Uh, then check the book on human etiquette. It appears half the pages of this book have been eaten. The daunting volume is considerably lighter than it once was. You are somewhat skeptical about the nutritional value contained in these pages. However, of practical wisdom they contain, there can be little doubt. You have learned so much. It is suggested that you clear out all of the cans inside the purple machine. You empty the peculiar cabinet and take a quick inventory of your canned goods. You have beans, mustard, gravy, bread, shrimp, asparagus, cheese, rice, corn, peas, flour, chestnuts, mayo, ham, potatoes, and squash. Such a bountiful plenty, and yet the delights taunt you from within their small metal prisons. Ugh, then perhaps you should search the room for a can opener. 
You have already looked all over the place for a can opener, even making a few electronic inquiries about one. To no avail. Nothing else inside the purple thing either. Then how about you locate a nearby sharp object? You wield your trusty knife! It is actually a, um... <laughs> well, uh, you're not sure what they're called. It's an old one of those rusted red mailbox arm swingy flappy doodads. Either for letting you know there is mail inside the box, or maybe for alerting the mailman to outgoing mail to be collected. You don't know, really. You've wrapped a little piece of cloth around it for the grip. It, it is useless for opening cans. Then how about you be the imp? This means nothing to you. You are not an imp, and you have no idea what an imp is, and you will not entertain such frivolous and childish ideas ever again. You feel stupid and you hate yourself a little for even considering it. Then become the mayor of Cantown. As the glorious founder and mayor of Cantown, you erect a dignified, majestic city hall out of cans, fittingly capped off with a tome of good manners for the roof. You have given yourself a very official and important looking mayoral sash made out of old cables to complete your look of authority. A number of rather civic minded citizen cans gather in front of this building to offer adulation to their fair and magnanimous leader. All is well. You immerse yourself in this beautiful dream as you whittle away the minutes, or perhaps hours. You love the idea of being a mayor. You love everything about mayors and the concept of an orderly, civil democracy. It all seems so mannerly and reasonable to you. Everyone is friendly and happy and the city runs like clockwork. The foundation of the government is based on the mutual respect between the leader and its people. It is also built on having a really great mayor that everyone loves who is totally amazing, heroic and brave. Mayors are so much better than kings. You hate kings, and you think kings are really stupid. They are petty, bossy tyrants, and they are really full of themselves and are basically awful in every way. God, do you hate kings. Explore the west of Cantown. Over here is the other side of the room. There is another one of those purple storage boxes, and some useless objects scattered on the floor. Perhaps you can use the glowing green rock to open the cans. You pick up the nugget of uranium and... Uh, oh, that was so stupid. Why would you do that? Examine the box of crayons. It's chalk, numbnuts. Uh, inside the box there are 12 pieces of chalk in every colour of the... 10 pieces of chalk. In most colours of the rainbow. You are excited by this. How about you try to open the storage box? It's locked! There must be some sort of release mechanism for this thing. Check the contents of the yellow container. The container is full of motor oil. This does not seem useful to you right now. Perhaps you should rescue that poor lightning bug. There is nothing you can do for this new little friend. Attempting to crush the amber encasing the firefly would likely cause it harm. It nevertheless bravely flashes on. You find its light alluring. Inspiring. To you, it seems as if it could quite easily serve as the light of... Democracy. Use the chalk to draw some roads. You sketch a handsome network of sprawling thoroughfares for your citizens to traverse. The adoring population applauds its mayor's keen instincts for city planning. You even add some lush vegetation to your city with a piece of blue chalk. Because you can't seem to find a more suitable colour for some reason. Lay down a chalk foundation for Cantown's civic growth. You develop westward, settling those fertile plains and claiming them for your city. You section off a number of residential and commercial zones for civic growth, arranging the only logical pattern that occurs to you. You colour the residential zones with your piece of white chalk, but for some reason, none of the other colours in the box strike you as suitable for the commercial zones. Perhaps there is an alternative. Use your own pee for the commercial zones! You cannot urinate because you have not had anything to drink for quite some time. You are very thirsty. 
Also, that is a really terrible idea, and you would not consider it befouling your wonderful city in that way for even a moment. Then use the motor oil to designate the commercial zones. You fill each empty square with a bit of motor oil to complete the zoning. It looks rather striking to you. You can hardly imagine that an up-and-coming young can trying to make it in the world would not be delighted to live in your fair district. You are very careful not to get any of the unpleasant fluid on your person. Peel the label from the can of mayo and affix it to sash. Survey surroundings in search of more terrain for your city. It seems you have run out of territory for your western expansion, but there is still a lot of empty wall space. Perhaps your citizens will be happier with a colourful backdrop that would make them feel more at home. Using most of your imagination and an entire piece of sky blue chalk, you render a bright and cheerful sky full of clouds. You have decided that very closely orbiting your city is a luminous planet, about which orbits a single moon. You switch to another shade of blue, and continue rendering on the western wall. Orbiting much further from your city are four planets. None of these have any satellites, you have decided. Yes, that makes sense, you think. And on the southern wall, Beyond an impenetrable veil of darkness, occupying the furthest orbit yet, there is an ominous planet. A moon circles this one too. Check out that rampaging boy on the screen. Oh yeah, it's that guy! You had almost forgotten about him and his confusing shenanigans. It seems like he has things well in hand at the moment. He does not appear to need your help, and you have already concluded that he cannot help you. At least for the time being. Try turning on the other three monitors. You have no idea how to turn these on. There is no mouse for this weird quadra monitored computer. It can only be operated through text commands from its keyboard. Perhaps there is a special key or command which will allow you to switch to another monitor. Try pressing tab. Consume several cans! You free the heavenly brown elixir from the jewels of pink carapace and imbibe them like the wind. It is so sweet and sugary. You wonder how much sugar can fit into one can. Whatever mighty wizard concocted this potion is truly deserving of your fear and respect. Welcome the rest into the city. The tabs are naturalized as loyal new citizens of Cantown. All cans are welcome and equal in your city, regardless of can content and whether empty or full. It is not like emptying a can kills it or anything. They're just cans after all. Now, try hitting escape. Feeling refreshed and heavily caffeinated, you go back to work on the big computer. You hit escape, which seems to minimize the action window thingy and reveals a history of all of the commands you have entered. You use the arrow key to scroll up a bit. You can't believe how much you've already typed into this stupid contraption. What a waste of time. You scroll all the way up to your first command. It looks like there are more commands above it. Maybe someone was entering commands on this thing before you. There aren't many more. At the top of this list appears to be the very first command. You activate Screen 2. The signal is garbled, and you have no idea what you're looking at. Some sort of filthy beggar pleading for help? No one is around, and nothing is happening. You seem to be locked out of any sort of interaction with whatever's happening on this monitor. You switch to Screen 3. It's another one of these rapscallions. This monitor is locked too. You can't tell him what to do. Not that you really want to, since it just looks like more confusing nonsense to you. You consider switching to screen 4, but decide against it. You have a feeling that whatever's there could just confuse you even more, and you don't even care all that much anyway. Type the home command. 
all four screens activate. Together they display a countdown starting at 4 hours and 13 minutes. Type the reboot command. You can't! Nothing is working anymore! The timer seems to have disabled the keyboard! Now be the mayor! Enough of this nonsense! You are an important mayor and this absurd contraption has wasted enough of your time. You've got a city to govern, with a carapace fist, which is to say firm, yet polished, and supple as the situation demands. Anyway, this will help you kill some time while you wait for the clock to count down. Create employment opportunities for the cans. You temporarily dismantle City Hall to free up all of the can power available to create a vigilant town militia and divide them into two groups, marking them with distinct teams and ranks using the piece of white chalk and the motor oil. You organize them in a phalanx across the countryside, preparing for a stiff training regimen. When you are through with them, your forces will be a well-oiled machine. Chalk another one up to bold leadership. more than four hours on this tomfoolery. Mourn the loss of Citizen Tab. Your caffeinated jittering must have agitated all of the little bubbles curiously hidden in the liquid, creating too much pressure in the can. You speculate this is why it exploded as you'd nervously eye the timer. You are starting to wonder what will happen when it reaches zero. Maybe it will be best not to be near it when this happens.